Today, we're going to explore the essential world of property surveys. If you've ever wondered about the importance of property surveys or wanted to understand how they play a crucial role in the real estate industry, you're in for a treat. In this video, we'll take you on a journey through the world of property surveys and uncover their significance. Property surveys are much more than just lines and measurements. They provide crucial information about property boundaries, easements, and potential issues that could affect your investment. When we purchased our home, the builder provided a survey of the property. This consisted of a surveyor coming out to the property, taking measurement, and then installing rebar on the ground, in the ground, sorry, with bright caps on the corners of the property. That way we knew the boundary of our property. One of the benefits of having the survey was that it was easy to install a fence within our property lines without having to worry about it being outside of the property. In addition to showing property lines, our survey actually included details such as easements, setbacks, and property improvements. So let's talk about the different types of property surveys and explain how they serve different purposes to ensure the smooth and successful transfer of property ownership. Here are some of the most common. An American Land Title Association or ALTA survey provides a detailed report of a property's boundaries, easements, and improvements on the property. This is the most common type of survey required by lenders and title companies before a real estate transaction is completed. And that's the type that was provided to us by our builder. A boundary survey is used to define the corners or edges of a parcel of land. A boundary survey is often used when there's a large piece of land and you want to make sure you know the exact boundary of the property to reduce any disputes with neighboring properties. A floodplain survey is used to determine if a property is located within a flood zone and provides information on the risk of flooding. This is important to know because it can affect the cost of home ownership as flood insurance may be required. Generally, you can find up-to-date flood maps on the Federal Emergency Management Agency's website. You simply type in your property address and it will show you if your property is in a floodplain. However, if the area has not been mapped before, a floodplain survey may be required. A subdivision survey is used to divide a large parcel of land into smaller lots for development. Sometimes you can find subdivision surveys on the, co the county's proper probate website. So now you know a few different types of surveys. You may be wondering, how much does a survey cost? Well, not surprisingly, the cost of a survey depends on several factors, such as the type of survey, the size of the property, and the terrain of the property. But generally speaking, a survey for a residential property will cost between $500 and $1,000. For a larger piece of land, it could range anywhere from $1,000 up to $3,500. But again, it all depends on the requirements. We had clients that needed to have two separate parcels of land that were approximately 10 acres each. They wanted those two pieces joined together. And that survey to do that cost approximately $1,800. When considering which surveying company to use, cost should not be your only consideration. It's important to use a licensed and experienced surveyor who will provide you with an accurate and reliable survey. Real estate agents, title companies, and lenders often have surveyors that they can recommend. In the state of Alabama, you're not actually legally required to obtain a survey to purchase a home. And often buyers choose not to do one, especially if the home is in a subdivision where there's a clear legal description on file. If you can obtain a title policy without exemptions, you're generally good to go. However, that's not always the case. Last year, we had clients under contract for the purchase of a home in a subdivision. As the title company was conducting their research, it appeared that part of the home next door was on the property that our clients were purchasing based on the tax maps. Our clients obtained a new survey and it was confirmed that in fact, the neighbor's home was on their property. So the closing attorney drafted some additional documents that our clients and the neighbor signed to protect the buyers. Finally, if the property is defined by meets and bounds, which involves physical landmarks such as trees, rocks, fences, or buildings to define the property, then you almost always need to get a survey unless one's been completed in the last few years prior to closing. As you can see, property surveys can be an important tool for property owners, potential buyers, and mortgage lenders. They can help in determining property value, protect property rights, resolve title issues, and determine flood insurance rates. All right, that's it for now. If you have any questions or comments about surveys, please reach out. We would be glad to chat with you. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video about all things Rocket City and real estate.